you know, your platform is, how are you going to get to 12C, uh, roadmap to get to your target platform, talk about migration, upgrade uh, options, and kind of summarize at the end of, you know, uh, upgrade, just modernize. As you probably uh, know, we're constantly doing uh, migrations on a monthly basis. 9i, 10.1, 10.2, all the way up to 11.203, we're doing migrations upgrade to 12C. So I wanted to share with you some of our experiences, some of the things we're into, some of the best practices, uh, and share, just share overall experiences and how we uh, respond to migrations. So with that, I'll turn about terminology because there's a lot of mix up here. Um, we use the term upgrade and migration a lot, right? So I just want to kind of baseline and say, you know, database upgrade is really uh, is really installed on out of place. All new uh, Oracle installs or upgrades are done out of place. Obviously, it's in a new, new directory structure, but an dictionary only transaction. It's a change that only happens at a dic data dictionary. No user data is changed. No user data is touched or removed. Is not really an issue or really an impact to the overall upgrade of the um, of database. What the fact it is, is the option. So if you use options, then the upgrade time does get impacted. Uh, my question is slightly different. Although it's the same out of place upgrade, uh, out of place uh, home implementation, the my is directly impacted um, by the data. Uh, what we're uh, is the upgrade is done in conjunction with the migration. And what we're talking, well, what I mean by that is, is that is really doing. We're not seeing a lot of um, upgrading in place. These upgrades are coupled with migrations where we're, we're platforming. Case in point is that we have we're going to use 9i upgrade. Yeah, believe it or not, 9i upgrade to um, 12. Uh, obviously, the 9i uh, versions. Have, are using very old Linux versions. They're old, using old kernels. They're using old uh, uh, features. So in cases of that, we're reforming to a new hardware platform, UCS or whatever it may be. Uh, upgrade is coupled with migration in most cases because we're moving to a new hardware OS, possibly new indigenous, even changing character sets. Uh, this is we're uh, doing a migration from non-Oracle to Oracle. So I want to make that distinction between upgrade and migration because we're going to be touching up on upgrade and, and migration and others. So what, well, upgrade to Oracle uh, is 12C really on what you're currently at because that's the roadmap to how you get the 12, uh, 12 102 specifically. So for example, like as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're doing an upgrade for one of our customers and they would go to how to be on the, uh, the terminal release of that product, of that product and have to go to what I call a trampoline version, which is 11.202 or higher, to get a 12.102. A 10.1. If you're on 10.1, you need to be on the terminal release to get to, um, to a trampoline version, which is 11.202, and then get to 12.102. But more uh, modern versions, 10.21 and 11.2, as long as, long as Release, you can go directly to 12.102. And um, it's the bottom. This really applies to upgrades. And upgrades, what we're doing, an upgrade for 9i, 10.1, and even uh, the 10.2s, we're not just in place. We're doing those as an out of place migration coupled with upgrade. So we're doing we're doing a 9i upgrade by using gate to get the 12.1. And we'll on a couple slides. Was specifically around upgrades. Now, what are migration? Right? You need to understand and evaluate the following criteria. What is the size? What is the difference for downtime? In other words, where's your uh, um, RPO and downtime SLA? Uh, what is your failback time? Uh, right? A lot of people don't consider, they, everybody considers the whole upgrade path and the time to do the upgrade, but they don't consider what it takes to go back in case you have back. And how many days into the upgrade, uh, past the upgrade, do you, uh, do you have the opportunity to fall back, right? That may dictate loss of data or potential to uh, lose data. So, opportunities and a bailback time. Uh, 
uh, source and destination operating system and version as we need this? Are you changing it in the entire platform? Because those things will dictate the tools that you'll use. You can use traditional tools uh, such as uh, transferable table spaces uh, to conversion, right? Uh, changing your data layout. Uh, you may have a to ASM uh, using raw devices. Uh, I believe so, uh, supporting a customer's running 10.1 with raw devices. So doing that change, a data layout change that we can consider as far as how the, that that's going to happen. Uh, and character sets. In most cases that we're running into, a lot of our customers, I want to implement compression and compression as part of their migration. Uh, why? Because once you do the upgrade, they don't want another outage to do the encryption change, uh, encryption uh, uh, upgrade. As well as the compression. So, a lot of those things are done in band as part of the upgrade of migration. So, get those pieces, technology features in place. Uh, uh, remote, like we mentioned, uh, the distance between source and target is a huge uh, of specifically the bandwidth, the data types that are data set. Bring some data types that are not supported by replicating tools such as Golden Gate or DB Visit. Uh, that may not be that rules out that option um, as part of that option. And really important point at the bottom is the infrastructure needs to be out first. So if you're already uh, ASM or you're using Rack and 12C, you need to ensure that that GI stack has to be upgraded first before you do any database. So make sure you have an outage window that includes a GI stack upgrade. So options for what I call these legacy versions. Um, and I'm probably seen some Oracle 5, 6, 7, or 8. But for the older versions, you know, going back from 5, up to 10.1, export import is still a viable option. And also, it's still an, yeah, an option that's uh, been tried and true and, and very viable. Uh, but a while, a long time to do the export, transport that uh, data set, and do the import, right? It's a very uh, legacy way of doing it, but it does work, but it's slow. For uh, applications or systems that have uh, more uh, hard time requirements on AI. Uh, on you can use transportable table space. That's one option. Now, you have zero downtime requirements, and you need fall back, a quick fallback option. Uh, application tools such as Golden Gate, DB Visit, SharePlex will, will also work. 10.2 to 11.203 or 11.204, what I call the more contemporary versions of Oracle, uh, the more uh, uh, very to up Grades, data pump, export import, DBUA, and the little sign there, is, uh, there indicates that uh, that really is an in place upgrade. Right? Uh, we'll talk about CTL, which is a new uh, method of doing an, uh, an upgrade. So, again, you have less downtime, you have a limited downtime requirements, physical standby, transportable table spaces. Standby are also viable options, uh, but have to be at least on these contemporary versions to do that. And we'll also talk a little bit more about this in the next coming slides. But there's a new feature that was added in 11.203. It kind of snuck in there, you may not know about. It's called full transportable export import and a command with data. Pump. But that, uh, if you're in 11.203 and higher. In the previous slide, if you're doing, if you have really zero time, downtime requirements and you need a zero downtime fallback procedure, then the only means is uh, um, is Golden Gate. Uh, it it uh, isn't that hard. It doesn't need to be there. Then you can do R man increment backups as well. And migration options. So there's a distinction between the upgrade option and the migration. You can just export, you know, data pump, export, import, CTAS, COPS, uh, uh, DBMS file transfer, but you can do that as, as well. Other uh, transportable data, database, but trans 
database really is for the same Indianness. Um, portable too, so it's just like the other option. Other also available. And portable export import is the best option if you're on 11.203 and above. And as well, Golden Gate is the right option or migration tool is the right option for migration. And we uh, uh, most use things like Golden Gate and DB Visit and Shareplex to do these migrations. Slide, I you know it's like a, it's, it's an hour, but it's kind of a summary slide that gives you uh, ways complexity, speed, and do along the way in band for like as far as changing data layout, changing character sets. So it says of this DBU is the lowest complexity and the fastest. Uh, for most, I'm sure you guys uh, on um, on the season DBAs, and you can command upgrades. We believe that uh, the KTL is probably the best, the most efficient way and a way to automate your upgrade process. So let's look at what these upgrade options are. We kind of went over where to use these options, about how these work, and we'll talk about DBUA first. Uh, you can for a long time. Uh, one of the ways is very it's very GUI. If you close a deeper using a graphical interface, um, so it, it could be, uh, it's a wizard based uh, uh, procedure and it will do the pre upgrade validation, make sure that all the checks are there, that make that ensures that you have a rest to do the make sure that you haven't uh, uh, getting any kind of uh, a check. Education. Uh, and you have objects during the post upgrade. You can parallel, you can gather statistics before the upgrade uh, as part of that process. Uh, in addition to even do a backup, uh, create a backup or register a backup in the case that you ever have to fall back um, and it wasn't successful. Um, in the new versions of DBA, they have a really nice restart functionality. Um, a reason it can it'll restart from the last point. And also, like I said, it gives you the option to set up GRP guarantee store points. And activity log is really nicely uh, formatted. Uh, although I wish it was a little bit more detailed, but it's guiding. So great options. You can compile uh, invalid objects after the manually running util, uh, util RP. You can use time zone uh, as part of post upgrade. You can gather statistics before the upgrade. We, we found that it does improve uh, upgrade performance overall. Change file locations, as we mentioned in the previous slide. One of the tools uh, introduced in 11.2 was CAT CTL PL. And this basically, essentially, this is the this is the scroll Perl script that actually gets invoked underneath DBUA anyway. But cat replaces cat upgrade. Uh in front of cat upgrade effectively. But it allows you to capability to run the database upgrade in parallel. You can specify on uh, uh, through the line uh, option uh, how many parallel slaves you want to execute uh, in an upgrade. So as I mentioned before, this is the new default feature for upgrade. Underneath the covers, uh, so upgrade scripts are run in parallel, and anything that has a possibility of running in parallel is executed underneath the covers in parallel. Um, and so the Perl script, and you specify the number of, of, of um, slaves you want, and we to run anywhere between 30 to 40 percent faster than a traditional cat upgrade. On cat CTL. Um, Done in, in that it gives you different phases. In the pre-upgrade phase, uh, there's a pre information tool. So if you run pre-upgrade, it, it's essentially a re readiness script that tells you how well uh, you're prepared and ready to do a successful upgrade. Um, that uh, uh, information tool it generates uh, 
fix up script and a fix that needs to be resolved before you do the upgrade. Um, so if there's no shop showstopper, you can easily run that uh, pre upgrade fix up script. Suggested, uh, you'll need that, uh, beforehand uh, parameters, some uh, 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 deprecated features. Those things will need to be fixed before you create this. Um, so, uh, automatically generates a fixed script, script that, that addresses most of the issues. Right? Run the pre upgrade uh, script. Uh, then Phase of this thing is the actual upgrade itself. This is where you specify uh, the you want to run in parallel. The post upgrade fix scripts for anything that's that that uh, kicked out as part of the upgrade, uh, recompiling objects, and then this util uh, 12 1s SQL. Uh, so what during the upgrade? It's really nice descriptive uh, output that tells you exactly. Uh, what the tool did, where they really had any warnings or errors, and then uh, invalid objects using the usual util RP. Uh, to mention, and you know that the, when you go to 12C, when you upgrade to 12C, DB control has been deprecated. There's no, or there's no longer DB control in 12C. So the process, DB control gets uh, removed, and that bit at a time. So it's part of the preparation, although it's not part of the cat uh, cat C T I would suggest that you do the uh, remove control prior to the upgrade. And you can do that running um uh, remove that SQL and that effectively removes that you gotta essentially you gotta do is uh, EMCTL stop the console uh, control and then run and uh, EM removes SQL. Charles Kim, and he's going to go into breathtaking details on all the uh, data pump and transportable table space features. All right, Charles. Right. As Eden mentioned, that, that um, is, is DBUA and uh, CAT or a parallelized version of CAT upgrade. Um, that um, I always promote is, is command line, and we actually uh, have proven in numerous environments where we can run command line and database upgrades significantly faster than DBUA, and we can go through uh, benchmarks where we can actually um, upgrade in the options that you have in uh, minutes. And so um, now, uh, what I'm going to cover is um, how do you get your data there. Platform so you can perform the upgrade. Um, as everybody knows, 9, 10GR2, and even 11GR2, it's been several years since Oracle uh, created uh, their database of 12C, which is that it's time for customers to do hardware, it's time to do OS level upgrades as well. And so it's very important for us. Majority of our upgrades are going to happen out of band and happen on new platforms. I'm going to focus initially on data pump and and make how do we do all this with reduced or in zero downtime. In 10G, um, support and data pump was. Data in the cell and for blob objects. Really, uh, objects that have blobs and clubs uh, pump is faster than your traditional export. And um, what we're going to do um, of data pump in uh, 11 as we had mentioned, that there is a full uh, data pump extract. And you can process it with a version equal 12, which says that prepare this data pump extract uh, that we may import to 20. And those are the coming slides. 
see that, that um, we're looking to put zero downtime upgrade. And I've included in the diagram um, a and that was there mainly because in the previous uh, leases, uh, Oracle didn't provide a mechanism to perform a cross platform uh, migration. And so, so folks who are uh, or space, we can introduce a state server and this from AIX to Linux, right? And the of the entire transferable table space uh, is dependent on Lebron RMAN. And whether you do image copy backups or do incremental uh, incremental updates with image copy, or you do standard backup sets with that so you can, you can order. but in particular example we're using the traditional uh, transportable table space and with a tra with a traditional transportable table space I level zero image copy in our example and I'm doing what we call incrementals forever and what this is, is that I'm making a level one backup every night or in this or every few hours and I'm buying it to my Image copy. So the whole idea is that uh, I do a series of incremental and I do a series of updates to my image copy. And that that data, uh, is consistent and current with the production data database. With the uh, traditional transportable table space, um, we have to pre create the users, the roles, and profiles, and, uh, and do a lot of the manual steps. As you can see, uh, that after we do the uh, transportable table based metadata import, which is right, I'm also doing an, another no rows import to the other metadata objects. Right, so after the data pump, um, and what we do is one step starting from the two or three. We're going uh, fully towards a full transportable uh, port, which requires you to be uh, on 11.2.3. And, and while it depends on whether if you're going to, if you get the same endedness or if you're going to do a cross platform. And so here's some, here's some talking points too is that we're going to have the same endedness, right? You may even do a data guard instead, right? That instead of a data guard from your old platform to the new platform, you keep it in sync and time with the upgrade, you break data guard and upgrade that database. All right. The uh, question is that um, if you if you want, for example, in you know, 11.203 to 11.204, right, um, you you skip that step where um, uh, and when you have versions like 11.203, 11.204, you can actually use uh, and you know with the uh, uh, and back and apply the archive logs two hundred three to eleven two hundred four as well. And so here's the export import. So just to explain the diagram kind of didn't do what we were. Expecting it to do. The idea here is that if you had to manually create the users and the profile and um, do that, and if it's objects owned by Sys, for example, right, you have to take those objects and make them on the uh, target side as well. Um, additional uh, metadata that you have to copy manually yourself. Um, and trigger. So, issue, um, try to go over them um, in the next. And this is the recap of all the steps that we talked about previously. And so, equal twelve, full equals y, and transfer equals always. Data files from source to target, and on the database, right? 
we regular report in our um, um, upgrading the 12C. And so all these steps, what we've done at Viscosity is we've actually automated a lot of these steps so that uh, it's literally a, a easy as one, two, three. We uh, put spaces in uh, read-only mode, we copy all the data files, we uh, do export, I mean export, and then we, uh, on the target side, we, we uh, we would import into uh, our and um, Indianist conversion into ASM, and then do the metadata import, and then we have a database that uh, created. And so, for real quick, um, basically this gives us the ability from, um, in this case, AIX to Linux. I can take a backup of table spaces on it, and I can store them on Linux. Incremental update that we talked about before. And, uh, with cross platform, I can reduce my downtime uh, significantly. Uh, uh, do the incremental forever approach with different in them and, uh, and achieve a, a, an 8x or plus. Uh, so, there's a metal link note that you need to uh, be aware of. 1.9592.1. And we'll post that on our chat session. And that's the middle that describes the uh, form that we store in detail. So, considerations. Thanks, sir. So, kind of summary as we wind down, uh, there's a couple things you need to think about as, as you're doing this upgrade. There's uh, a guaranteed restore point accordingly. Right, uh, it's done for you. But if you're if you're using command line, you just need to put that as part of your procedure. Uh, and for your AWR retention period is long enough to capture historical data. For example, uh, we've been in several situations where we've done the upgrade two months to have a SQL that appears, which really runs once a month or once every quarter, and picked a really bad plan. So how that plan uh, had evolved and looked at what the plan looked. Like we upgrade, and we have that plan uh, to harden it and lock down on it. So for you, AWR retention period is long enough to capture at least some level of historical data. And uh, back to, uh, data statistics in case you need to go pick up an older SQL plan and in order to, to harden it. Uh, definitely consider that for real workload testing. You know, we've done cases where we use a synthetic workload, and it's just not the same. And the real test is to use your real workload and test it, uh, uh, test and test environment for your upgrade. And that's the only way to really validate that your workload is going to be accepted. Um, we brought you is there's new features that automatically get enabled in 12C, such as query uh, optimization. Is that's helped 75% of our uh, applications or, uh, or queries run faster, but it's those 30% that didn't get uh, that didn't get fixed that actually run really, really bad. So keep in mind that like uh, that the query optimization do work pretty well, but they run away in a lot of cases. You'll need to have statistics in AWR to go back and compare. Consider for legacy versions, you'll need to go back and apply. Capture uh, patch for line I 10.1 and 10.2. You'll need a rat capture patch. Uh, up from an old version of rack to a new version of rack, especially if you're doing it in place, there's some consideration that needs to be well understood. Uh, especially true for 9i rack to 12c rack. Um, the arc is quite different. Yeah, in fact, ASM wasn't there in 9i rack. So if you're going to do this, it's best that you plan this thing, especially do it out of place. Uh, use the migration methods we talked about earlier. Um, and uh, if you're doing an upgrade, also make sure that you upgrade to 12 uh, to the GI stack first. It's a question whether you use Flex ASM or not. Um, the legacy uh, clients are just the biggest issue. The upgrade typically goes fairly smooth. We've done enough of these. Most 
upgrade issues with legacy clients, data, and, and as are the ones that we have to spend a lot of time on uh, for post upgrades. Uh, last bullet point: we have actions, you know, client such as uh, or eight I clients, uh, eleven one clients that don't connect correctly. Issues connecting to a database. So uh, test that thoroughly before you do an upgrade. Uh, uh, think about not just upgrading but modernize. And what here is that if you're replatforming, you do an upgrade. But we want you to think through how to make how you should clean up and clean out the current database even before you do the upgrade, because it make upgrade go so much smoother if you don't. If you're Jump with it. So clean up orphan tables, unneeded indexes, trigger that doesn't need to be there. Uh, also, don't bring back to the world. What we're doing by that is think, uh, think, rethink operationally. How do you do efficient backups? Some of the new features, new functionality, right? How do you how do you simplify standardize your environment? And this is especially true. Uh, what we're saying to viscosity. Migrations. We're not just migrations to one database. We're we're, we're migrating and consolidating databases under a four node, five node rack cluster, right? So rationalize and think how you can simplify the stack and standardize your stack, right? Um, as agility, how do you create new databases quickly? TDBs, multi-tenancy is the right approach. How do you improve AJ? Standardize on getting data guard as part of the stack. Uh, databases as a service. Maybe service. And now using 12C features, there's two opportunities to do more and more application and database cloning. Features will allow you to, to do those things in a virtual environment as well as a non virtualized environment. You guys got something out of this uh, session. Oh, we gave you a lot of information in a short period of time. Uh, we'd have you guys extend, you know, come out. And visit us or talk to us about your, uh, upgrade opportunities you have. If you want to buy days off of us, we've done we do quite a few quite a bit of upgrades every month. So we'd love to hear from you, get some feedback. If you have any uh, opportunities we want you to work with, them, feel free to uh, reach out to us. Uh, uh, we have a this is a series. Uh, this is one of a series of six or seven sessions we're doing. We'd love you to attend some of the next ones. The next one is on multi-tenant. That thank you very much. For your time today, and thanks for everyone who was able to attend. Register is now open for part two, which is consolidation and multi-tenancy architecture by Charles Kim, and that will be on Thursday, June second. Thank you so much. And look for a follow-up from myself or Jennifer Sarkeesian to give us feedback or ask us any questions about the webinar. We can also help you in finding the slides or the recording to download. Thank you. Take care.